So we're going to do an upgrade of the Acer Aspire V5 122P, uh, which is a new, uh, I don't know what you call this really, sub-notebook. It's not an ultrabook, it's not a netbook, based on the AMD A6 1450 Timash processor. Touchscreen, backlit keyboard, uh, additional battery uh, capability, pretty well specified actually, and uh, available for about $450, so it's actually a pretty good value device. But anyway, it's got a 500 gig SSD uh, hard drive in it, so clearly we're going to get some advantage if you put an SSD in it. This is uh, mydigitalssd.com's BP4, uh, Bulletproof 4 SSD, it's a SATA 3, uh, 6 gig uh, interface, and uh, pretty fast. This is a 240 gig version. Um, so we're going to do this live. It's only going to take about seven minutes. First thing we need to do uh, is just to boot and uh, count the time it takes on the hard drive to boot to the, the logon screen. So I'm going to do that now. And uh, it usually takes about 25, <coughs> 25 excuse me, seconds. And that is uh, 10 seconds already. And... That's 15, 16, 16 seconds there, so that was booting on the hard drive. Now that's not the only, uh, the only way you can uh, get an advantage from an SSD. Of course they are more rugged, they are quieter, they are more efficient, and of course you get the speed up as well. And booting is just one, one way to show uh, the, the SSD speed up. But for example, on this device, uh, if you're doing, for example, video editing, which this device is capable of, if you're only doing 720p style uh, editing, Moving files around with the video editor is pretty slow on the HDD, so using the SSD, that should actually make it pretty usable. And um, there's a lot of other things that you'll see speeded up on this as well. So let me uh, close this down, and we will quickly flip it over. It's a pretty pr pro quick process to take the SSD out. One or two things, though. Uh, use the Acer Recovery tool to make your recovery disk. It basically copies the recovery partition from the drive to uh, an external hard drive. You can also use a 16 gig USB as well. And that is, uh, because it's a not, not a BIOS uh, style boot here, it's UEFA or UEFAI, I forget what the name of it is, uh, you'll need to do that. Also in the BIOS, enable F12 boot menu. Uh, I had problems getting the device to boot from the hard drive uh, with the new SS, uh, sorry, without any, uh, um, with a brand new SSD in it. So F12 enables the uh, boot menu, hit F12 after you put the power on and you'll see the choice of boot devices. Right then, so let's uh, take the mains out and uh, we'll flip it over. Now I've left uh, some of the screws out of this one to make it quicker, but basically all the way around there you'll see the screws and if I just pull have I taken, I've just got probably one left in there I suspect. Let's pull that one out. There's one hidden underneath the battery, extra battery cover there. Got all those out. And then take that one out. And basically from the, the right hand side, when you can get on underneath it, it pops up very easy. And uh, let me just pull that up. So across the side there. Across the back, and then pull it up on this side, and then push it away across the audio port on this side. So let's give you a quick tour. Uh, there's the fan. Uh, there's the single uh, memory slot there. Half height um, uh, um, PCI Express card for the Wi-Fi there. Uh, single antenna, and here's the uh, f uh, two and a half mil. Sorry, uh, two and a half inch, seven millimeter high drive-by, okay? So, there's a couple of things to note about getting this out. Um, first thing you need to do is basically take this uh, ribbon cable off. You can, if I can zoom in there, you might even be able to see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can. You see, there's a little latch in there. Just stick your finger in there and pull the black bit up, and hopefully, you'll just be able to pull that out. Be careful with this. I mean, if you're going to do this a hundred times, you're probably going to break the cable. So let's just uh, be pretty careful with that. And then, two screws on this one, there's on one here, and this is wrong. I put the screw in the wrong place. That is actually one of the screw holes for the case, the rear casing. So don't use this screw hole, use this screw hole down here, okay? That's where you'll find it. And then basically, just pull the 
SATA cable off the bottom and there you see you've got the uh, drive with the uh, casing on so I've taken obviously a couple of the screws out already mine only had uh, two screws out of four in it when it was delivered and maybe they're trying to save time on the production line oh, we'll just pull that out there now be careful it's a nice 500 gig drive you can use it for an external with an external uh, unit right then so we're going to take the bulletproof 4 from my digital ssd they have sent this over uh, for me to do the testing free of charge so full disclosure i'll let, let you know that uh, this is uh, sent over for testing. Thanks to them for that, though, because it's uh, useful to to be able to do this. And you can't get seven too many seven mil drives in the market at the moment. Um, just making sure we've got that round the right way. You probably have to put it that way. So slide it on there, and then I'm just going to put one um, one screw in there. This is the hardest bit of the whole thing because the screws are tiny. Okay, just put the one screw in there. There you go. Surely I should do that. Zoom out. Just put one screw in there, and then we're going to pop this back in here underneath the ribbon cable. Just lay it on the top as a little location hole down here. <coughs> put the SATA connector in first before you put it down. That's all located. Put one screw in the top right there. And one screw in the bottom this time, not on the side where you saw me take it out. Look at this battery, it's 37 watt hour, a well, 30 watt hour battery. There's absolutely no space for anything else here. I think I've put the wrong screw. There it is. Mm -hmm. Goes in there. How are we doing for time? That's seven minutes gone, but it was about three minutes of messing around to start with. So I have actually pre-installed the, uh, the, the the OS on this using the recovery tool that Ace provides. So we'll be able to go in and just boot this up. Right, that's that done. Again, from the left, just pop that in, make sure it's over the audio port, and just push it down. It's really, really very easy. And for testing, I won't bother putting the screws back in. So, let's uh, open that up and, uh, and boot that. This is always a fun moment. And we'll time it as well. Go. Right, BIOS is around 6 seconds on this, and what was that, 12, 13, 14, that wasn't too much faster than, uh, than the uh, hard drive, so not a lot of the Windows 8 uh, boot process is relying on drive speed these days, if that was Windows 7 you'd probably see it go down from 60 seconds to 20 seconds, uh, highly optimised on Windows 8, but anyway it's working, and uh, Let's just uh, go to File Manager there. Let's put the screen point this up. And on computer, you will see that I've got single partition, 209 gigs uh, partition with 177 gigs free. So that's it, that's the upgrade. So there's only really one thing for me to do now, and that's to do the uh, Crystal Disk Mask, uh, Disk Mark tests. I'll make it a bit quicker, I'll do three passes at 500 megabytes a second and you should see now sort of speeds now with the hard drive maximum sequential read and write was around a hundred megabytes a second four hundred and twenty six there so a four x improvement in sequential write uh, read speeds there uh, I've actually seen 470 in one of the tests I did, so it's possible that this might not be running at uh, full full clock right now. Um, but that's not the most important. It's these areas, this area down here that's very important. Um, and this figure here was about 
uh, 1.5 megabytes a second for write speed at 4K block sizes and it's these small blocks of data that are thrown all around the disk uh, that's a good way to show it, isn't it? Uh, that uh, really, really show up the difference between an SST and a hard drive. And these are the sort of um, processes that are done a lot of the time in Windows anyway. There's stuff going on in the background, movement of small files all around. And so it's not these sequential read and writes, although they do help for file, file copies. There's this figure down here that I always find the, the most interesting. So we're uh, for, um, what is this, uh, 512KB. Uh, uh, block size writes now, and we'll just get to the write size. And uh, so, once again, that's um, my digital SSD or my digital disk count dot com uh, bulletproof 4 SATA 3 SSD. Um, I've tried it in another device as well, I think it was the Toshiba Z830, and that was an ARC, and it didn't, it couldn't pull the speeds out that this is pulling out here. So, obviously. A nice setup in terms of SATA and the, and the bus on Timash uh, here on the uh, Toshiba Ultrabook, it wasn't so good. So that's a nice figure there 12 megabyte to uh, second read. And then we'll quickly go across here, next test, to see what sort of write speeds we get. So we're getting 4x on sequential improvement. Let's uh, see what we get here. There you go. So that's about 15x. Uh, well, it's between 10 and 15x improvement on that, and that is that is where that is where the uh, the advantages come. Um, so, have I got something I can fire up? Not really, but um, basically everything's going to be uh, pretty uh, snappy now. Let's get some. I just want to see what uh, CPU speed we're running at because I've got a feeling we're we're on battery saving. Yeah, it's only running at. Uh, 600 megahertz at the moment, it can go to 1.4 gigs. Uh, it's at 1.1 1, 1 .1 now. Okay, so that kind of concludes the uh, the test. Um, if you want to find out more, go to ultrabooknews.com and umpcportal.com where I've done some testing on uh, the Temash uh, CPU and GPU, some of the features uh, of that. Um, but uh, the full review will be on uh, ultrabooknews.com. But hang around if you just want to see me do that test again uh, with a uh, high clock rate, we'll just run it uh, now and see what uh, figures we get. Um, might be that we get uh, the faster read speed. Also, remember booting on Windows 8 the first couple of minutes, as on any Windows system, uh, can be a bit hectic in terms of background processing. There's the 480 that I've seen before, so that was the. Um, the reason was either the clock was on a power saving or the uh, system was basically doing stuff in the background which was slowing it down. You'll probably see about 22 megabytes a second there. I'll just stop that and we'll uh, just run the 4K test. Let's wait for that to finish. We'll run the 4K test now. While that, uh, while we wait for that, just let me say that this is, um, in terms of performance, sits between an ultrabook and a netbook. So if you, you you're coming from a netbook and you want something with uh, a little bit more grunt, certainly this is 1080p playback capable, nice web browsing speeds, reasonable efficiency. It's only got a small battery in it though, uh, three hours to four hours battery life. But you have got the possibility of putting an extended battery in. Keyboard backlight, the keyboard's not bad, the mouse is not bad. It's not top of the range, but it's pretty good. Uh, screen is nice, it's an IPS uh, display, it's only 1366 by 768 but pretty good. 35 megabytes per second write speed there, that's uh, 20x what we got on the hard drive, so some serious advantages there. My name's Chippy, thanks for watching this video, that was an SSD upgrade on the Acer Aspire V5 122P on AMD Timash, thank you very much to my digital SSD for sending over their Bulletproof 4, their BP4 SSD for testing.